Hey there, welcome to the sixth Easy JavaScript tutorial part of EasyProgramming.net. Last time I went over what variables are, how you declare them, and the various types of variables. Today I'm going to speak about two other types of values you can assign to variables. They're DOM elements and functions. This is something that we'll practice throughout JavaScript because it makes things so much easier to do. I briefly demonstrated storing an element in the JavaScript console tutorial where we grabbed an ID using document.getElementById and storing it in a variable, and that's exactly what we're doing. Storing this entire piece of code into a variable can make your life a lot easier when you try to reference it later on. You don't have to type this over and over again, you can just use the variable and refer to that variable. So let's take a look. On line 2 here, I have a variable called title, and I am assigning this entire piece of code, which is document.getElementById title. Uh, in my JavaScript code, in my HTML code here, I have, whoops, I have a div ID title, uh, and all it just says is JavaScript variables. So I assign this entire um, node into the title variable. So if I uh, log into the console, it will give me the entire node, all the HTML within that same node. Pretty easy, right? So now instead of writing document that get element by ID and in parentheses title, I can just reference title. So title, we want to know what type it is. Uh, it'll be an object type. So when I run, title is of type object. So this is a DOM element, this is a node, this is an object, so you can break things down. Uh, we're going to go over nodes later on where I show you that you can break things down even more when you're trying to iterate through HTML. So it's an object. This is fairly straightforward. So this makes life easier. So I set up a few examples to take a look. Uh, in the past, we can either do document. Let me just copy this just to make my life a little bit easier. So we can document and get element by ID to change the style dot color to, let's say, red. If I run it, it changes the text to red. I can write all of this, or I can just get rid of this. Since I stored all of that into a variable, I can just write title, that style, that color. There you go, it's still red. I will go over the style object later on. Don't worry about that, it's a, it's a special property. Uh, let's say I want to change the font size. I can do title dot font style dot font size equals to, let's do 25 pixels. If I run. There you go, it's bigger. So now instead of typing in document.getElementById every single time, I can just title dot. This is also easy when you're trying to do other actions. So I can do title dot inner text. Let's say I want to change the text to um, this is my JavaScript code. If I run it, and it changes the text. Pretty easy, right? It looks so much shorter, it's so much neater, and it is reusable. That's what variables are for. Now that we've covered that, let's look at functions. So functions are a type of data. Uh, you can store them into variables. So I here I have a simple variable called added, uh, which has a function that pretty much returns 5 plus 5, which is going to be 10. Uh, don't worry about the function structure. I'll go over this later on in the actual functions tutorials later on when I cover them. Uh, so let's say I want to see. Here I'm going to comment out the log so it doesn't keep printing out the the div ID title every time in the console just to keep it neat. If I run it, so now it says function here. Uh, I, I didn't put in the whole text here. Let me just quickly do that. So function so added is of type function. If I run it, so added is of type function. So function is a special type. So you can reference the added function anytime you want. So here in the console log, if I run console log added, it returns the entire value of the function, which is return 5 plus 5. If you want to run the function, you can run it, clear the console, and run, and the value is 10 because I ran it. So now you can do things to uh, the function. You can you can add functions to it. You can treat it like a uh, uh, you can take the output and treat it like a string or a number and do stuff with it. So now you you only have to reference added rather than the entire function itself. So uh, so that's all there is to uh, JavaScript variables for now. Uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial where I will be covering JavaScript variable scope. 
Uh, we'll see functions once again to show you how functions can play a role in where variables can be accessed from. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer. Please visit my website at easyprogramming.net and subscribe for future tutorials. Thanks for watching.